Hello friends, welcome to Life Class with Ayum. What an honor and privilege to be with you again today. Thank you for joining me. This is my Pain Your Game Ministries. And in this month of June, I've been sharing on this subject of the God of Recompense. The God of Recompense. Each time I think about the reward of God, which is what recompense is all about, I get excited because God is a God that rewards us. He's the God that pays us back. The Bible says God is not unjust for, to forget our labor of love. So it is injustice when you do something and somebody holds back your reward from you. God is a just God. He's not an unjust God. Therefore, he pays us back for whatever we do for him, for whatever effort that we make for him, or for whatever pain that we go through for his name's sake. He pays us back. So if you've missed any of the previous teachings I've done so far this month, I encourage you to visit the videos library on our Facebook page, My Pain Your Game Ministries, or visit our YouTube channel. And by the way, if you've not liked the page or subscribed, I also encourage you to do so. Please give us that thumbs up and share this video if it blesses you. So see, talking about the God of recompense, I'm going to be speaking on how God rewards faithfulness. So you can title today's teaching, God rewards faithfulness. God rewards faithfulness. Faithfulness simply means to be true to somebody, to be loyal, to be constant, to be devoted to a particular cause. That is what faithfulness means. It means that you do something and you keep doing the same thing over and over again. A faithful person is someone that you will find in the position that they ought to be any time that they ought to be there. You won't come there and you will not meet them. They are always there, day in, day out. And when we are faithful to God, the Bible says he remains true. He cannot deny himself. God doesn't change. So God can never be faithful. But when we, on the other hand, are faithful to God, we can be sure that God will reward our faithfulness. God will reward our faithfulness. And he actually rewards faithfulness. There's a story in the Bible that is very interesting. And that story is the story of Zechariah. You'll find that in the, in the book of Luke, the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, they tell the story of how Zechariah and his wife, Elizabeth, were, were advanced in years. They could not have children. And at this time, Elizabeth was well past menopause. So there was no way she could have children. She was, she was, um, her womb was considered as dead because she was old. And her husband, Zechariah, also was old. But there was something that was peculiar to them, especially given the, um, the story of Zechariah in, chapter, in Luke chapter 1 there. He was faithful. He served his God faithfully. He did not allow his problem to stop him from serving God. And that is the challenge a lot of people have. When they are going through tests, when they are going through trials, when they have a, maybe a need in their life, they think it is time for them to take a break and ensure that that need is met or whatever prayer request they have is answered before they serve God. But I want to encourage you that keep serving God. Whether you, whether you see the, whatever you are believing God for or not, keep serving Him. God is a faithful God. There is a payday, there is a reward day. If you, if you are a worker, not every day is payday. You, maybe a lot of people are paid monthly. So you can get, go to work for the whole month and then just one day they hand over your paycheck to you. Some people are paid weekly, some people are paid fortnightly. So no, no, whatever the frequency of your pay is, you also discover that it's not every day that you are, you are paid. And then for some people that are paid on a daily basis, you find that what you get on a daily basis cannot be compared to what you will get if you were being paid on a monthly basis. So I want to tell you that God is a faithful God. He does not owe any man. There's no way you can go through something for the sake of God and he will let you go unrewarded. He rewards our faithfulness. And that was what he did in the life of Zechariah. If you look at um, verse 8 of that uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 8 there tells us that why um, he said one day Zechariah was serving in the temple for his order was on duty that week. He was serving in the temple. I I'm sure they have like different groups. And his group was on duty that day, and then he was chosen by, by, by Lord to go and burn incense. And while he was in there burning incense, the angel of the Lord appeared to him. And then the angel told him that he was going to have a child. At this time, I'm sure Zechariah and his wife had given up on having children because they were well advanced in age. 
But because he was found faithful, he was serving. And at the place of serving God, God appeared to him. And God, God appeared to him through his angel. And God promised him that that his long um, heart desire, that thing that he's been longing for to have, it is now the time to have it. Zechariah couldn't even believe it because he was saying, how can that be when my, life, my wife is old and I'm, I'm old myself? Why is that going to be? And because he couldn't believe it, the angel had to shut his mouth and say, you're not going to speak until this child is born. And if you read the story on, you find that that was what happened. And eventually they had a child, a son that, that happened to be John the Baptist that was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. So you find that that is what faithfulness does. What if Zechariah gave up on serving God because he was a priest? What, is, what if he gave up and said, I have been serving God all my life and what, what, what have I gotten from me? Look now, I've served God, I'm old, I don't still have a child. What if he gave up? Probably that miracle would not have happened because the angel appeared to him at the place of service. That is why I say that faithfulness is doing something and doing it continuously, doing it repeatedly as the need requires, as the occasion demands. And that was what happened in the case of Zechariah. Because he was found faithfully serving God, God answered his prayers and God gave him that miracle that he's been expecting all his life. So I want to say again that it pays to serve God. It pays to serve God. God will not owe you if you serve him. God will not owe you if you are faithful to him. God will not owe you if you've gone through pains or losses for, the, for his name's sake. He's going to pay you back. And of course, I know there's reward in heaven for us as children of God for whatever we go through on earth here. But even on this earth, God will begin to reward you for whatever you've gone through for his name's sake. So I want to encourage you that it pays to serve God. It pays to be faithful. So let us remain faithful to God. Don't give up because you've not seen that miracle you are waiting for or that miracle you've been expecting. Because it may be that the day that you say, I'm not showing up again, I'm tired. That is the day God will send your angel to come and give you the answer to your prayer. And when it comes to the place that you are usually found serving and you are not there, you are going to miss that miracle. So I want to encourage you, keep serving God faithfully in whatever capacity that you find yourself. God also rewards our faithfulness in giving. God wants us to be blessed each time he says we should give to him. So I know some people are, some people query giving to, uh, to the church, giving to the ministry, giving to the work of God. And they say, what is the church doing with the money? But I want to tell you that there are a lot of needs in the church. Of course, there are people that misappropriate the funds that come to church, but that does not mean that we should stop giving because a few people have abused it. Because there are still genuine people that use the, 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 the funds that come into the church for the preparation of the gospel. And this money is needed so that the word of God will be spread around so that people can be helped. So let us keep giving as the Bible enjoys us to give. Because at the end of the day, God rewards our faithfulness in giving. God rewards our faithfulness in giving. And um, Apostle Paul was saying that when he said in, in the book of, um, when he said, um, I'm trying to get it now. Yes, in the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 7. Philippians 4 verse 7, he said, Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. And then the New Living Translation puts it this way. He said, I don't say this because I want a gift from you. Rather, I want you to receive a reward for your kindness. I want you to receive a reward for your kindness. And if you read the preceding verses before that, he was trying to tell him that don't give up on doing good. Keep giving, keep serving. And I'm not telling you to give because I need your money per se. That is not why I'm telling you to give. I'm telling you to give because I want God to reward your kindness. I want God to reward your faithfulness. So when you, when you are faithful, God rewards it. There's a reward for faithfulness in serving God. There's a reward for faithfulness in giving. There's a reward for faithfulness in whatever area that we find ourselves. Even in being diligent in your work, even if it's in your workplace. The Bible makes us to understand that whatever we do, we should do it as unto the Lord. We should do it as unto the Lord. In, in um, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8, it says, Serve wholeheartedly as if you are serving the Lord, not men, because you know that the Lord will reward everyone for whatever good he does, whether he is slave or free. The Lord will reward everyone for whatever good he does, whether he is slave or free. So he's telling us to serve wholeheartedly. 
serve consistently be found at the place that you ought to be each time it is required of you because your labor will not go unrewarded so i want to tell you that god is a god of recompense he recompense us for our faithfulness and i'm going to end by leaving us with a quote this quote is by Ralph Ramsey. He says, before the, before the reward, there must be labor. Before the reward, there must be labor. You plant before you harvest. You sow in tears before you reap in joy. You sow in tears before you reap in joy. So remember that, that before the reward, there is always labor. That is your place of service. That is your place of giving. That is the place where you are, where it is taking some effort and some energy and some resources from you. And as you do that, you can be sure that your reward is coming. He said, before you, before you, um, you plant before you harvest. You sow in tears before you reap in joy. So continue doing whatever you are doing right now faithfully, and I can assure you that your reward is just around the corner. Don't give up now because you may just give up and you miss your reward. Continue whatever you are doing and definitely you'll get your reward. And again, if you're watching this broadcast, you've not given your life to Christ. I want to encourage you to do so. Because when you are a child of God, when you've given your life to Christ, whatever you do here on earth, you will not just get your reward here on earth, but there will also be a reward for you in heaven. And that, I believe that is even the reward that is most exciting. When you have crowns, you'll be rewarded with mansions for whatever you have done here on earth. If you want to give your life to Christ, I invite you to please say this simple prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, here I am before you right now. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I can't help myself and I can't save myself. Father, I ask you, God, that you please have mercy upon me. Wash me with your blood, O God. Forgive me my sins. Come into my heart and become my Lord and Savior. Lord, from today, I completely surrender my life to you. Lead me and help me to follow you faithfully. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations if you say that prayer sincerely. I know it's a very simple prayer, but it's a very powerful prayer. If you mean it, I want to tell you that you are now a child of God. Jesus Christ has come into your heart. So begin to cultivate a relationship with him. Get a Bible for yourself. You can download a free one onto your smartphone or whatever device that you have. And begin to acquaint yourself with the word of God of what he requires from you. And as you do that, Ask him to give you the grace to obey them. And I know that grace is going to be poured into your life. So once again, thank you for joining me. And I want you to share this video if it blesses you. And once again, if you've not liked our page or subscribed to our YouTube channel, I encourage you to do so. By the way, on the 3rd of August, I'll be holding a one-day seminar. I call it a life class with AUM on the 3rd of August. So save that date and if you live in Reading, United Kingdom or you live around Reading, I invite you to join us because it's going to be a wonderful day. So, so thank you and God bless you. Bye.